copying virtual machines. So the word copying is a little confusing with Zen Server. What they really mean by copying is cloning. This is where you can clone or duplicate an existing virtual machine. Now, when you're doing a copy process, you have to understand that you can only do it within the same resource pool. VMs must be powered off in order for you to do a copy or clone of the particular virtual machine. And there are two types of copy processes, right? There's a fast clone and there's a full copy. For those of you that are VMware educated, fast clone is the equivalent of a linked clone. So what happens is it will take the existing virtual machine, it will use its base image and then create a writable delta file. So it'll take the existing virtual machine and create a writable de delta file that this new virtual machine can run against now. Now there is a catch here. While the clone process is extremely fast, you can bring it up and running very quickly, you always have that dependency on the master image that you're using this from. So if you're trying to recreate the virtual machine, you will need the Delta file, but you will also need the original master image. So pay attention here that the fast clone has a dependency on the master virtual disk that you used when you use fast clones. Whereas a full copy will take a full copy of the virtual machine. And as a result, you end up with an independent virtual machine that has no prerequisites or no dependencies. However, it obviously takes longer to create that full copy. Let me show you how that works within Zen Center here real quick. Now, in order to do the copy process, we have to power down the virtual machine. So I'm going to take this opportunity to also show you how we're going to gracefully shut down our Windows 7 virtual machine here. So I'm going to right click on it and we're going to do a shutdown and you'll see how it's going to initiate a soft shutdown or a graceful shutdown from within the operating system. And within a few seconds here, it will be completely powered off. And you'll notice that once it's powered off, it'll continue to have like this uh, image or this JPEG of the shutting down process. But the virtual machine is actually powered off, as you can see up here where it says click here to start. And you can see the red icon here that pretty much says that this virtual machine is powered down. Now, in order to do a copy process, we're going to right click on the VM and you'll see it says copy VM here. I'm going to select it. And once you get to this screen, you have the option of doing either a fast clone or a full copy. Now, again, fast clone is similar to linked clones within VMware. It's where it preserves the master disk and then it creates a writable delta file that you can write against. It's obviously much quicker. It'll finish the cloning process very quickly. However, it always has that dependency on the master virtual disk. Whereas with a full copy, if you select that, then it's going to prompt you, hey, which storage repository do you want to save this new virtual machine on and you can go ahead and select whichever one you want. You can obviously change the, the name of the virtual machine that you're creating. For the purposes of our demonstration, we're just going to select fast clone. I'm going to leave the default name here and I'm going to go ahead and select copy. I mean, it is that quick. It's done. So if you select it now, you can right click it, you can start it, you can do whatever it is that you need to do with this particular VM. And if you don't need to do anything with it, like is the case with us, we're going to right click on it, come down here to where it says delete VM. And I'm going to select all the associated disks that make up this new configuration. And I'm just going to go ahead and select delete. And it's going to get rid of it completely, preserving my original Windows 7 virtual machine here. All right, let's move forward here. Import and export virtual machines. So the import process allows data to be sent over SSL. So the data is going to be secure. As part of the import process, it's going to create a new UUID for the virtual machine. It's going to create a new MAC address for the virtual machine. And it's also, if available, the VM will be attached to the same network. So if you're importing a virtual machine on the same network from another Zen server in the environment, if the network is configured, it's going to try to connect to the original network of the virtual machine. If not, then it will fall back to the default configuration. Import and export process of the virtual machines as well. From an export, the virtual machine must be powered off. The virtual machine exported as a single uncompressed binary file. Exporting use cases can be for mobility of the virtual machine. It facilitates VM library creation you'll have a full vm backup when you export it that virtual machine can be you know you can do whatever you want with it you can back it up save it on a usb drive if you wanted to 
and it's also useful for archiving a virtual machine. So again, all of these are backups, uh, and you know, for DR and business recovery standpoint, you can use the export use cases for these types of scenarios. Now we talked about import and export of virtual machines. And while we've used the import command more than once in earlier lessons to import virtual appliances, let me show you real quick where you can do that again, and then we'll come back to the export. So if you select Zen server training here, or my Zen server host, you right click on it, you can always import. And this will take you through the wizard of importing a virtual machine or a virtual appliance. Typically, it would be an OVF or an OVA as we've done in earlier lessons. Again, very simple, very straightforward uh, process here. Now, from if you wanted to take an existing virtual machine, you've configured it, and you want to turn it into an appliance so that you can pass it around, or maybe you just wanted to save it for archiving purposes, for backup purposes, for whatever the case is. So let's take, for instance, the Windows 7 VM that we have powered off here. If I right-click on it and select Export, then I have the ability to give it a name, I have the ability of giving it a location, and I have the ability of giving it a format, right? So what format do you want to export this virtual machine in? and you can select you want maybe an XVA Zen server virtual appliance or maybe you want it in an OVF now if you export it as an OVF you can import it onto a VMware platform so again because OVF is an open virtual machine file format that VMware also understands and Hyper-V and others so depending on what the purpose is behind your exporting of this virtual machine you can then select the appropriate format if it's going to stay on Zen server then you might as well leave it as a XVA a file format and from a location perspective again you can choose to put it maybe on your desktop um, for easier access let's go through next here it's going to tell you the size um, of this virtual disk essentially if we go through and select next you can add a EULA to this virtual machine if you wanted to for end users we're gonna leave that out so we're gonna click on next you can create a manifest and digital signature or, or digital signing of this particular virtual machine if you needed to do that. You can create the OVA package as a single OVA export file. So this was kind of cool if you wanted to do that as well. And you can compress the OVF files if you wanted to. So again, it gives you a lot of granularity here in terms of what you want to do with it. And if we click on next, this is where you get to configure some of the options for uh, the network, for instance, for that particular appliance that you're exporting. You can do it so that it automatically obtains a DHCP address, or you can force it to get its own IP address. I would obviously recommend you keep it at DHCP because you never know where you're going to power it on. It just makes it easier, and then you can change it if you need to. And then when you're ready, you're going to get here a summary of the tasks that it's going to do. If you're comfortable with everything that it's going to do, then you can, you know, click on finish and it's going to run its course and create this particular appliance on your desktop which you can just treat as a file at that point and move it around wherever you need to within your environment now I'm not going to go ahead and click on finish as the process will just go through I just wanted to show you what you can do here if you wanted to export this as a virtual machine so I'm gonna go ahead and click on cancel all right, now what if you wanted to move a virtual machine? Right now, this virtual machine, it's on local storage, and you maybe wanted to move it to shared storage. How would you do that? So if you right-click the virtual machine here, you'll see that you have the option to do Move VM. If you click on Move VM, you can select which storage repository you want to move this particular VM to. So you, for instance, you can move it to the iSCSI virtual disk, or you can move it to the NFS virtual disk. So you can select the storage repository you want to move it to and click on Move, and it will go through and move the virtual disks of this virtual machine from where they're at today, which is on local disk, onto the other storage repository that you've chosen. 